This is Mike from Susquehanna Alchemy, and I want to do a brief overview of the 100-year transition or the 100-year timeline from the first computer to the singularity. And we're going to start with the end point um, of this 100-year transition, which is estimated to be 2045. And this is the date of the singularity. And so let's first define the singularity to the best we can. Um, the singularity is a, a concept which is talked about relatively often within the, uh, the futurist community. Um, those that predict um, what the future is going to look like. And so the singularity is this general concept which deals with technology and the merging of the human experience and humanity for that. But where the singularity gets interesting is the fact that there really isn't a, a set definition. Um, you could see here from uh, the singularity web blog, they're saying, it has, we have to be clear that we really do not know what the singularity is or will be. And that's because the singularity is more of a threshold which is going to be crossed. All of the different definitions are describing a similar concept, but what exactly it is, no one knows. Um, but it represents a point in time where something is going to happen where it's going to be undeniable that it happens. It's going to have to deal with technology. And the other aspect is there's no turning back. So it's a threshold. Singularity is, or maybe the, the, the person best known for talking about the singularity is Ray Kurzweil. And he wrote a book in 2006 called The Singularity is Near. And Kurzweil is a I like to call him the, the high priest. And there are many other futurists who talk about the singularity and people have different definitions. And they also have different estimated dates on when it's going to occur. But because Kurzweil has such a, a um, the biggest platform to speak, his voice carries the most weight. And Kurzweil, he, well, first, he, he defines it as the singularity is representing a profound and disruptive transformation in human capability. And he gives the year 2045. So that is our end point. And that is what the transition is, is to, this, this singularity. Whatever, whatever life will be afterwards is going to be so inherently different than what we have experienced so far. We could see here uh, Time Magazine's article, they're using the 2045 year date, and they're also tying in this concept of immortality. Um, and you can see there's a, um, there's a plug in the back of, of this person's neck, and it's, it's implying also of a, a technological um, aspect to it. And here we see uh, there's something which is known as the 2045 initiative, which is laying out a... a um, a framework or a roadmap towards um, eternal life or life extension. This is the uh, gentleman who founded it. He's a, a Russian billionaire. Um, the more I've researched him, the less I could find, which has me scratching my head a bit. But we can see a picture of him here with the Dalai Lama, and what he's holding in his hand is where they go over their four different um, milestones. Uh, until they reach this 2045. And we can see right here, it talks about the different milestones, Avatar A, B, C, and D. And here, D is the ultimate goal of the project, and that is human experience as a hologram. Um, it's not so much to be, to upload your consciousness into a, um, a piece of technology. I mean, that happens in the, in the first couple ones steps. The ultimate goal is to be a hologram. And this is a clue 
as to what this future world will be like, where being a hologram would make more sense than being in a physical, albeit a uh, robotic body. So the second thing which we have to realize also is that though this, this singularity is occurring in material reality, I mean, it's working with like real physical things and the real physical people and companies working towards it. Um, it's grounded in, in alchemical rituals and ceremonial magic. Um, my sense is the majority of people uh, involved in the technological aspect are unaware of it, but probably those at the highest levels are. Now, also interesting as it relates to the singularity is this concept called the Singularity University. And we can see here that it was founded by Kurzweil. Um, and it is described as a think tank. Um, the intention is to bring together leaders and senior leaders, so executives, the policy, the, the implementers of policy within different organizations. And they want to bring together leaders in business, government, and nonprofit. And it, it's one, an opportunity to, to network, but then also to work with cutting edge technology so that their different organizations can prepare for and be aware of the technologies which are coming. Now, as I indicated before, there's a, a, another aspect of this, which is the alchemical or the magical ritual. And this will be covered more in-depthly in, in another talk. But note that where this begins is from the Rosicrucian movement from the 15 and 1600s. And not so much the Rosicrucians as it relates to the, the German aspect of it, but more of the English, the um, John D. and Francis Bacon. And now I want to bring up Amorc, which is the ancient and mystical order of the Rosy Cross. And this is the largest current Rosicrucian organization. And it's, it's as far as financial assets are concerned, so it's a legit organization. Here's a picture of their uh, um, Egyptian museum, which is, from what I understand, the largest collection of, of, of ancient Egyptian artifacts outside of Cairo. And we can see here where it's located, uh, 1342 Nagli Avenue. And here's the, the, the headquarters of Singularity University. We can see here on this map that these two are only five miles apart. Um, this may have a little bit more significance um, as more of this information begins to, to settle in. So the singularity can be thought of as the end point, and it's the end point of the, the culmination of all of our technology, and all of our technology is. Um, computer-based. So that would mean the if, if the singularity represents the end point, the beginning point of this transition is going to be the first computer. The first computer was built in 1945. And it's called ENIAC. The, it's an acronym for the Electrical, Electronic, Numerical, Integrator, and Computer. And it is, uh, we can see here is the, the birth of the information age. And it is located at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, which is um, a US Army base. And here we can see this is Aberdeen Proving Grounds right here. And this is the Chesapeake Bay. This is the very top of it. And this is the Susquehanna River. This is where the river transitions into the bay. They're the same body of water. And we can see that this first computer is located in this very significant geological aspect where this transition occurs. And Enoch sounds a lot like Enoch. And that is, uh, that is no coincidence. John D., who uh, 
here according to the John D. website, John D. Society, they they credit him as the founder of the Rosicrucian Order. A lot of people have that title, but regardless, we're going to see that he's connected in a rather, relatively um, um, senior way with, with Rosicrucians. We could see he's the visionary behind the British Empire. We could also see how he communicated with angels and came up with this Enochian alphabet, which is the 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 cornerstone of Enochian magic. And this is where we're beginning to see the first taste in this behind the scenes alchemical and magical aspect of this movement towards the singularity. Now, what's also interesting is we could see right here, this is talking about ENIAC, and it was announced to the public on February 14th, 1946. It was already up and running prior to this, but it was announced on the 14th. And one of the things which we're going to see as we go deeper and deeper into this is that um, these rituals which are done are based upon ancient practices. And so the February 14th date, and it's at the evening, so it's post sundown, it corresponds also with Lupercalia, which is an ancient, um, an ancient ritual to the, the god Pan, and it's a fertility ritual. So what is, what is offered upon this day is asked to, to multiply, if you will. So here we have the, the two different um, points, and there's, there's much more to it. And I'll, I'll, I'll go into a, a deeper, a much more in-depth presentation, but this is an overview. So we see the, the beginning point is this, this Lupercalia. It's Enoch, Enochian, and ends with the singularity. So let's, let's link the two. John von Neumann was a, a, um, was a, a, a rock star of mathematicians, probably the, the greatest mathematician of the 20th century. And he played a significant part in the ENIAC project, we can see right here. And what's interesting and why he's our link is because Neumann is also the first person to use the term singularity in a technological context. So we see this one individual who has this touch on both of the endpoints. Now we want to go look at his name because we're talking about, about magic and alchemy and symbols. And so nothing is really off the table. And so John von Neumann is also John the New Man. And when we go back to what we see, one aspect of the singularity is this birth of this new new man, this new human, this new species, if you will, um, which is trans, trans human, which is the blending of, of, of our natural human body with um, technology. But there's also an element of, um, of transgender with this also. And we'll talk about that a little bit more because that plays upon the um, the age of Aquarius archetype, because that's also in play to it. Um, arguably, um, arguably, the uh, uh, the singularity represents the full embodiment of stepping into this age of Aquarius. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I want to conclude this talk with this picture right here. And so there's always more than meets the eye. And this is a painting from 1913 of John D. performing an experiment, if you will. Experiment is probably a, a um, veiled term for some sort of magical ritual for Queen Elizabeth. But there's more going on. And we can see that 
art historians looked at this picture through a uh, um, through like an X-ray machine, and they found that there's a ring of hidden skulls painted behind or underneath. The final product. We can see this right here. We can see all of these skulls. Here's John D. and here's that that experiment. And there's a circle, a magic circle of skulls. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because this is a clue. As John D. is a public figure, but there's always much more going on beneath the surface. It's a lot to, to think about in this video, so I'm going to end it right here. But this is just the beginning. It's going to go much, much deeper.